keynotes provide a consistent way of annotating drawings to identify model elements, detail components, or materials. Keynotes use tags and data from an external text file that you associate with an element, component, or material. I'll zoom in to the top of the wall in the current view and select the roof. In the Properties palette, I'll click Edit Type. In the Type Properties dialog, there's a parameter called Keynote. This field is currently blank. I'll click in that field to make it active and then click the button. As soon as I do, Revit displays a dialog telling me that it is unable to locate the Keynote data file. Before you can associate Keynotes with elements in your project, you must tell Revit where to find its Keynotes. Keynotes are stored in special ASCII text files. Revit actually ships with several different Keynote data files, and you can modify these and create your own. You can have different Keynote data files for different projects, but only one file can be associated with a project. Once Keynotes have been placed in a project, if the information in the Keynote file is modified, all of the Keynotes will update appropriately. I'll click Close, and then click Cancel to close the Type Properties dialog. Before I can add any Keynotes, I have to associate a Keynote data file with this project. On the Annotate ribbon, I'll expand the Tag panel and click Keynoting Settings. Revit displays the Keynoting Settings dialog. Realize that the path type can be set to absolute, relative, or at library locations. I'll select at library locations and then click the Browse button. I'll navigate to the Imperial Library and scroll down. As you can see, there are several Keynote data files. Of course, if you're using metric units, you would look for these files in the metric library. Typically, you would use one of these Keynote files. For this exercise, so that we all use the same Keynote file, I'll click Cancel to return back to the Keynoting Settings dialog, select the Relative Path radio button, and then click Browse again. Notice that I've got two Keynote files created just for this lesson. Select either the Imperial or Metric file, as appropriate, and then click Open. Now that a Keynote file has been assigned, in the Numbering Method area, you can choose whether to number by Keynote or by Sheet. I'll leave this set to By Keynote and click OK. Now, I'll select the roof again and click the Edit Type button. In the Type Properties dialog, I'll click in the Keynote field and then click the button. Now, Revit displays the Keynotes dialog, and I can select the proper Keynote to apply to the roof. Instead, I'll click Cancel, and then click Cancel again to close the Type Properties dialog. Then, I'll click in the view to deselect the roof. You can also select the appropriate Keynote when you place a Keynote tag. On the Annotate ribbon, in the Tag panel, I'll expand the Keynote Split button, and choose Element Keynote. On the Options bar, notice that the tag can be horizontal or vertical. I can include a leader, and the leader can have a free end or an attached end. In the Type Selector, I can choose the type of Keynote tag I want to use. I'll select Keynote Number, Boxed. When I move the cursor over the roof, I can see the Keynote box. I'll click once to place the leader, click a second time to place the elbow, and click one more time to place the keynote. Since I had not associated a keynote with the roof, Revit displays the same keynote dialog we saw before. I'll expand the branch for 03000 Division 03, Concrete. Expand 03500, Choose 03510 Cementitious Roof Deck and click OK. When I do, the keynote immediately fills in. I'll click Modify and then, in the Type Selector, I'll change the keynote tag to Keynote Text. See how the keynote immediately changes? 
I'll deselect the tag, select the roof, and then click Edit Type to open its Type Properties dialog. As you can see, the keynote has now been filled in. This keynote is based on the roof model object. You can also place keynotes based on materials. I'll click Cancel, and then I'll select the wall. In the Properties palette, I'll click Edit Type. In the Type Properties dialog, I'll click the Structure Edit button to open the wall assembly. In the Edit Assembly dialog, on Row 1, I'll click in the Material field, and then click the button to open the Material Browser. The current material is Insulation Thermal Barriers External Wall Insulation. This material is also opened in the Material Editor. When I click the arrow next to the material name, the description information appears. Under the Revit Annotation Information section, there's a Keynote parameter. When I click the button, Revit displays the same Keynotes dialog. I'll expand the 07000 Division 07 Thermal and Moisture Protection branch. Expand 07200 and choose 07240 Exterior Installation and Finish Systems EIFS. Notice that you can expand the subdivision and provide even more granularity to your keynotes if you wish. I'll click OK to close the Keynotes dialog and click OK again to close the Material Browser. In the Edit Assembly dialog, on Row 4, I'll click in the Material field and then click the button to open the Material Browser again. Now the current material is Masonry, Concrete Block. In the Material Editor, I'll click the Keynote button, expand 04000 Division 04, Masonry. Choose 04220 Concrete Masonry Units and click OK. Then I'll click OK to close the Material Browser, click OK to close the Edit Assembly dialog, and click OK to close the Type Properties. On the Annotate ribbon, I'll expand the Keynote Split button and select Material Keynote. In the Type Selector, I'll choose Keynote Number. Notice that on the Options bar, when placing a Material Keynote, if you include a leader, it always has a free end. I'll move the cursor over the insulation in the wall, click once to place the leader, click a second time to place the elbow, and click a third time to place the Keynote. I'll click Modify to end the command, select the Keynote, make a copy directly below the original, and click Modify to end the command. Then I'll select the copy and drag the leader grip and move it into the masonry wall core. As soon as I do, the Keynote updates. You can also place user-specified Keynotes. User Keynotes do not pick up Keynotes from a model element or material, so you can use them to assign any Keynote you want. On the Annotate ribbon, in the Tag panel, I'll expand the Keynote Split button and choose User Keynote. I'll select the roof. Be aware that the Keynote preview shows a question mark. As soon as I place the Keynote, Revit displays the Keynotes dialog. Even though the roof already had a keynote assigned, I can place a user keynote to include an additional keynote. I'll expand the 01000 Division 01 General Requirements branch. Choose 01600 Product Requirements and click OK. Then I'll click Modify to end the command. 